Welcome to the Let Good Things In Show. I'm your host, Amanda Acker. I am so happy you're here. At the Let Good Things In Show, we talk all about second chances, resiliency, following your intuition, and even music. Listen to hear stories of hope and to be inspired. Remember, you are stronger than you think. Let's dive in. Hi, my amazing humans. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I am so excited to be bringing you my guest, Marcia Armstrong. Marcia has a passion and a zeal for life. As an advocate of personal development, she believes that we were created to operate in our full potential and capacity without apology. Therefore, she has used her decade of baking experience as well as her personal experience of becoming financially free to coach women on how to transform their perception of money so that they become confident and financially empowered to impact. It is Marcia's mandate to positively transform and impact one household at a time as this can shift families, communities, the nation, and the world at large to operate from a place of abundance and financial wholeness. Welcome to the show, Marcia. So happy you're here. Thank you for having me, Amanda. It is truly my honor and privilege to be here. Ah, awesome. So can you tell us a little bit of your story and how you got to be where you are today? Well, my story began a bit rocky. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I would have grown up in a household. You know, I'm a twin. I first, I, I have a twin brother. Oh. And I would have grown, <laughs> grown up in a household, you know, four of us are siblings. And my father um, would have been in our household. And I would have experienced um, situations where there was, you know, domestic um, violence. Mm-hmm. And um, we had a, a lot of scenarios where there were a lot of like quarreling, and you know there was just a, just a, a heightened level in the household, and it just felt like if you know you were restricted in, in, in what you could or could not do, and uh, you know it was it was really a truly a, a trying time for me, I guess. You know, as a young as a young a little girl, you know, not necessarily having a voice for certain things. And being very, very sheltered in, 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 in other areas and, you know, just wanted to just have a peaceful environment, you know, that when you leave and you go to school and you come back, is you're coming back into a place of love, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, because of that, I would have um, went through a, lot, a very long period of my life, especially in my teenage years, where it was kind of like rebelling. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, 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 had, I, had, I had different attitude or behavioral issues. I was saying, but it never really impacted my schoolwork. For some reason, my schoolwork never was impacted. But even as it relates to my behavior, you know, I I, I found that I was kind of lashing out, know, but it was a cry for help more so. And right. um, and so based on that, I really and truly did not have a sense of who I was as a person. And when he would have died at the, when it was at the age of twelve, he he would have passed away from uh, prostate cancer. And so when he passed away, you know, as I said, in my teenage years, going to young adulthood, I was just kind of like existing in life, wasn't really sure, you know, where, who I was and what was my purpose. Never heard the term purpose before. Wasn't nice. sure, you know, what was my mandate? Like, why was I created? And um, so I went through many, you know, went through many things in my life where I was looking for love in the wrong places as well. You know, seeking that father's, yep. that father's love, that father's affirmation, that father's protection. You know, that, that father's provision and it was sitting there in the wrong places and in places that weren't good for me, but places that ideally would have used a vulnerable child because although I was born in age, I still had the mentality and the hurt of a, of a, of a, of a, late, a little girl that experienced trauma. Yeah. And so that would have flowed into my decision making, you know, because if I don't love myself, how could anybody else love me? You know, exactly. and, um, and so things like that would have came to the to, to the fore. But as I said, even on, on the flip side of that, I would have been always a person that I would have been studying. So I, I studied, I went through university, I, I would have heard my study. So I believe that even me studying, although it is a good thing to pursue your education, I believe it was just a, 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 a like, like a vice to keep me busy. Right. Um, you know, yeah. to keep my mind occupied with something else, but I don't have to really actually focus on what was happening in my personal life, you know. And um, so, but, you know, so I got to that particular place. And then in, in 2009, in particular, that is when a friend of mine would have said to me, Hey, Marcia, I want to invite you to church. And I said to myself, Oh, okay, I'll come along. 
and I, I used to go go to Hergus Church and would literally sit down in 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 the, in, the, in the pew and just you know just listen, but not necessarily like be attentive, but just hear but right. not listen. And yeah. <laughs> until one moment, you know, one particular day, a a, a a service was you know a sermon was being preached, and I don't know what he said. But what I really did say, it was something that would have really hit my heart at that moment. And I knew within myself, you know what, this is the time for me to just give my life to Christ because I would have been doing it on my own, trying to fix myself on my own, trying to be able to find a solution on my own. And I said to myself, you know, I'm sick and tired of feeling the way I'm feeling. So I would have surrendered my life to him on that day. And I have never been seen. <laughs> so I would have never been the same because from that one experience it would have shifted I would have been known by a new name similar to how you know in the Bible where it has Abraham would have been known as Abram before he was called Abraham I believe at that moment I was renamed I was given a new lease on life I was able to find out okay why I was created who I am and because I knew who I was then I started to love myself I started yeah. to show up in the world differently I started to basically speak a new language I then started to surround myself with people that were going towards something and not running from it you know so yeah. that was weird that was really the pinnacle for me to be able to be presenting to you the way i am today where i'm using my experiences to help other women as well to be empowered and to break through Wow, that's a very powerful story, Marcia. I I can relate to you on so so many things that you said. Um, you know, the first thing is like you felt like you didn't have a voice growing up. Like you couldn't, you know, you weren't you never felt safe to speak your truth and how you were feeling and you know, for me, you know, I wasn't my I was not abused as a child, but I still felt like I was never being seen by my father yeah. because, you know, he was just wasn't emotionally available to us as kids. And I always felt that that pull or that like wrenching feeling inside of me, like I need to be close with my father, but I just could never get there. You know, it was that ongoing battle. Um, which led, you know, me down my dark path and then also feeling sheltered and feeling as though if I step out of this, you know, what my parents are telling me or whoever's telling me that I'm doing something wrong, you know, like being sheltered is, is a really, it's just not, it's really hard to break free from that because you're basically, you're being brainwashed, you know, you're sheltered, like you're being told, oh, I want to watch this TV show, mom. And your mom turns around and says, well, I don't like it. It's weird. It's bad. So then you think, oh, it's bad. So when you go out into the world and you meet other people and they are talking about said show and they're all like, oh, it's so great. You're like, but my mom told me it was bad. Yeah. And it's almost like you feel ashamed of like You feel almost embarrassed. You know what I mean? Exactly. 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 And, and, and what happens as well too is that we take the narratives of our childhood, we take, you know, we take whatever would have been spoken to us or the things we would have seen and literally carry that weight with us throughout life. And sometimes when we don't allow ourselves to, to receive love, and that was a big thing for me, I always had a wall up. It was like whenever someone um, treated me well, I always asked the question, what do you want? What's in it for you? Yep. Because it wasn't, I, I wasn't accustomed to get, just getting, just receiving genuine love. And I believe that that would have caused me to really and truly push away a lot of people as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I, I, you know, like, I think me and you both, like, we were looking outward for that love and acceptance because we never felt good enough. We didn't feel like we deserved that. So we were always seeking it out to fill this void because we weren't, I know for me, I wasn't taught growing up how to be an adult, so to speak. You know, I wasn't taught how to form relationships with other people that were healthy. So I was just out there like, okay, like I'm going to figure this out on my own. And lo and behold, I wasn't good at it. And yeah. I ended up in toxic relationships, friendships, you know, addiction, incarceration, like all of these things because I wanted to be accepted by other people. But guess what? who I didn't accept? I didn't accept myself. Yeah, so when you were talking about that, I was like, yes, like me too, you know? Yeah. And I just, I, I think that so many people listening can relate to that too. So I'm glad you brought that piece up because we have to learn to look inside of ourselves. So I know you said that 
you were at church and that's where you kind of had that epiphany moment. So what, so after that epiphany moment, like what were the steps that you took to start to accept yourself and look inward um, after you realized that? Um, I, w- I would say definitely in addition to, well, as I read, as I read the Bible, um, one of the things I would have done would have been to, you know, read the Bible a lot. And I realized that as I was trying to search for him, it was finding me. <laughs> right? Yeah. I needed to come to to say it. But as I was searching for him, I actually found myself. And how he spoke about how he fashioned me and how he created me and the purpose he set for me and, you know, come to the number of hairs on my head. And it was like, you know, I'm royalty. You know, you are loved. You are protected. You are affirmed. And I I, I, I began to, to, to really and truly, like, take those words and, and, and cause myself to, like, like create a cloak where I would have placed them, placed them upon me and placed them within my heart. And I realized at that moment, I was able to look into the mirror and not look away because there were times in my life I could not look at myself. Yeah. I did not like to hear my own voice because I heard it and it would cringe. You know, mm-hmm. I, I really actually did not love, love myself because, you know, I was, I was, as you would have mentioned, I just felt like it was a band, I just felt like it was just a part of the, you know, a part of the, uh, like a part of furniture then in the household. You know, you're there, but you're not there. And yes. so when I went through my process, I began to speak to myself and affirm myself. And I realized that as I started to build myself and to edify myself within, it would have built up this confidence within me that would have caused my faith now to be fierce and to be empowered. So that in regards of who I spoke to, I didn't speak as a person that was an orphan, as they were saying, biblically, I wasn't speaking as an orphan, but I was speaking as God's child. And because I knew who I was, then I really would have commanded my atmosphere to kind of align with where I was going. I mean, this is a girl now that now had a vision. Mm-hmm. This is someone now that was thinking more about her future. This is someone now that was open to love, you know, love in friendships, love in relationships. This is someone now that would have allowed her heart to be broken in order to, be to, to find herself, you know. Yeah. So my heart, so even in my brokenness, they found me. And because now that I and that I got to that particular place, then I you know my words now, my words are not just spoken for you know, I just I just not speak idle. I speak, you know, I always have a weight to the words that I say. I make sure that his words are coming from a place of love, you know. My root issue, my root sorry, has to be on the foundation of love. And I have to protect my peace, I have to protect my energy. So I'm very, very careful at the rest of who I surround myself with because I never want to be that person I was before. Because I know what that place looks like. So I'm about opening my mind to receiving the new things, to experiencing the, you know, the, the new seasons or, or the new people, the new environments, to be able to use, to be used in multiple ways. And there's a joy now that flows from all of me. There's a voice now that I'm sharing on all platforms about fear. And that is really a beautiful place to be at. And I know that right now I am still becoming. You know, because we're still evolving as an individual. So I'm still becoming and I'm loving the woman that I'm becoming. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I could, I, I'm on the same journey right there with you. Like when you said about, you know, allowing love in, like that was the hardest thing for me to do yeah. because I was conditioned to believe that I didn't deserve that kind of love. So honestly, like when my husband and I first started dating, like I almost destroyed our marriage because I couldn't accept his love. I kept thinking, oh, you know, he's telling me this, but he can't be telling me the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, he what what does he want? What what's gonna happen? Is yeah. he gonna go and hurt me? Is he gonna start abusing me like everyone else did? You know, so I just was was not I had that wall, like you said. I just could not get over that, you know. And then when you have those moments like you did where you realize I can have this love, I deserve this, it's it's magical. Like, I don't know what other word to use. It's just like, wow, like, I love me. I love the woman I'm becoming. Like, when you said that, I was like, me too, Marcia, me too. (laughs) You know, because we have been through so much. And when, you know, you're surrounded by people who are negative and who don't support you, Mm -hmm. you now you can recognize it like almost instantly. We're, We're not perfect at it, I'm sure. But you know, and when you notice it, you're able to say, nope, not for me, and move on with no guilt. It's, oh my gosh, is that freeing? It's freeing. <laughs> exactly. And it's so freeing. It is so freeing. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my gosh. I know like on, 
you know, with friends and stuff and people who have come into my world over in the online space, like there are people where I just know, like, I don't want to associate with you and it does not bother me. And for me to say that, oh, that is growth because I always worried about people not liking me because, Mm -hmm. oh, well, if this one doesn't like me, then they're going to, you know, obviously I'm, you know, I'd be in my own head. Like, obviously they're going to tell everyone else not to like me. Right. You know, but meanwhile, they probably don't, you know, but that's what we think in our heads, yeah, you know, to create an entire story. And it's yeah. something that says, you know, I remember being in, the, in a place where I was, you know, even it, it, it came to just being accepted because when you try to get to a place where you're trying to be accepted, it means then that you go against your authenticity. Hmm. And I, I'm not showing up as my real self. I'm becoming someone I'm not so that I will be accepted. And that yeah. is not a very good place to be. You know, it's not a very, very good place to be. So it's a stand in your truth. Know what your boundaries are. Know what your beliefs are. You know, and just stand in your truth and not be fearful. You know, if someone doesn't align with you, that's quite fine. We, 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 we send them love. We still love yeah. them. But at the end of the day, we love ourselves to that, to that effect that we allow us to protect, you know, protect what's around us and protect what, get in, what gets into our mindset as well. Because whatever gets into your mind, hey, I'm very careful about what I listen to, who I, who I love to speak into my ear, what I love myself to watch. Because you are the some, you know, you're the average of the, per, of the five persons you spend time with. If I see your friends, I can tell you your future. So mm-hmm. because of where I am particularly going, I have to be very mindful of that. And the thing is that I believe that everything that I've been through, I don't regret it one minute because I had to go through it to allow someone else to overcome it. So to, to speak yes. my story and tell someone else, hey, you know, even though you might be going through this area right now, there's another side of it. There's, you know, you still have that pen in your hand. You can still write the end, the end of that story, right? You still have that power. You are still, you, you are still beautiful. You are still, you are still needed, right? That your purpose is needed, and you are needed. And this is for that person that, that has told themselves, you know what? I've been through too much, too much, and it's time for me to give up. And let you know right now, I don't look like what I've been through, but at the end of the day, I'm still here, and I'm here to let you know through the sharing of my voice, the, the voice that was once upon a time ago, but one that is now free. And I am here to let you know, right, that you have that power and ability to create and design the life that you deserve. And it is possible. Whatever it is that you want, whatever it is that you deserve, you deserve all of it, and you don't have to do anything for it, because His grace is sufficient. Oh my gosh, you just gave me so many goosebumps. Like, oh, that was good. <laughs> and also true, you know, like, you know, when you mentioned like being around those people and how you would try to become somebody um, for somebody else, like I did that too. I call it that I was being a chameleon, right? Yeah. I was like, oh, well, you know, even though personally I don't really care for country music, but if that person did, then oh yes, I like country because now you'll like me. And yeah. it's just and then you lose yourself in that process. You complete I had no clue who I was. And like I had my epiphany moment just three years ago. So yeah. I've lived a very long time as a chameleon. And I was just sick of it, you know, it's just like I'm done. And you know, when you talked about um you know, back to the people you surround yourself with. That's so true. And before finding the online space, I was always surrounding myself with people who were like, you know, just, they were always complaining or, you know, nothing was ever good enough. And their opinions were very um, one-sided and there was no, they didn't support what I was trying to do. I was told I was strange because I believe in the power of manifestation and intuition you know, like, oh, that's cult-like, you know, there's no support. And now that I've freed myself from those people, it's like, holy crap, like where, you know, like these people that are now in my life, like you, I love seeing you on social media. I just, you're so inspiring. So, I, so inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just, and I'm like, wow, like there are good people out there who will support you in whatever your dream is. If you think it's crazy, if you think it's completely out of reach, it doesn't matter. You will find people who will support you and love you and hold you up and help you get to that goal without making you feel strange or making you feel that you have to change who you are at your core in order to get what you want. That is so, so, so good. Oh my gosh. Like... (laughs) I 
agree with that. I, I always say as well to that, even when you when you commit, when you come into a position, when you're a position and posture, when you get to that realization of who you are, your people, the people that you have been called to serve and the people that you have been called to impact, you draw people to you. You mm-hmm. draw your people to you. So the world is really and truly just meant for you to just get to the realization of who you are and to say yes to you. When you get to say yes to you, when you get to love yourself, when you actually realize the power and the authority that in which you carry, you will realize that everything that you need in this life to operate with, you already possess it, number one. But then also you, all those things, all the resources, the tools, the people, the knowledge, everything is drawn towards you. Everything yeah. that you need is drawn towards you. So that's what's happening right now in the online space. When we connected, I believe that we were drawn to each other because, you know, it's a blessing to us to also see, you know, your, your post on, on, on Facebook oh. as well. You know, so uh, this is, and this moment, I believe, you know, was supposed to happen. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah that, that, when yeah. you're around the right people, your language sounds the same. It doesn't sound foreign. When you speak, people understand you. Yes. And it, that right there too, like for me, like that realization and then truly finding what I wanted to do with my life. And literally it was like instantly almost, I wake up the next day, I decided this is what I want to do. This is who I am. I'm going to stand in this and make this happen regardless of what I need to do to get there. I'm going to do it. And I made a post on social media and I got so much engagement and it hasn't stopped since because I'm completely aligned with what I'm doing and everything I need is being pulled towards me. And it's almost like it's not real. Like, I just want to like pinch myself. Like, is this real life? Like, I'm not sure. <laughs> exactly. So. Everything is drawn. Everything is drawn to you. So you're, yeah. you're, in, the right, you're in the right place. And as I said, you know, um, you know, we would have been through what we've been through. But at the end of the day, we did not stay there. It's one thing to yeah. go through something. But to, but it's to fight your it's to get to a place where that you you kind of you know you 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 branch from it you kind of branch out from it you don't stay in it because when you stay in that place it means that that person won right yes. that person because the enemy has been sent to kind of like steal to kill and destroy and and destroy in your the word so my thing is that if I stay in that place of brokenness if I stay in that place where I was traumatized it means I'm lit, my future is being stolen my mm-hmm. purpose is being stolen. My vision is being stolen. The people I have been called to impact, that's been taken away from me as well. So I can either play, I can either be in a victim mentality, or I can step up and I can, I can, I can try. I can I, not just exist, but actually try and, and operate in the way I'm supposed to. Because whatever was meant to harm me, I can use and turn around for my day. Yes. So true. You know, like I, I like to say that, you know, we're not defined by our past, but in the same breath, it's like, Mm -hmm. but if we didn't live our past, right. right, We, like you said earlier, we wouldn't be able to share these stories to help other people overcome. So, but when you stay in that victim mindset and you stay in the shame and you're, you can't forgive yourself, you are literally robbing yourself Mm -hmm. of what you deserve. You're robbing others of what they need from you because we were all put here to do amazing things. And when we all come together, my gosh, it is one of the most beautiful things in the world. Like, I I am so blessed to be able to, to be on the other side and everyone listening, like you deserve to be on the other side too with us. Yes, Yes. you do. Well, Marcia, this has been an amazing conversation. Um, just to wrap things up, can you just tell um, our listeners today, um, what is your number one tip for them to allow the good things into their lives? I would say the very number one tip I can give to you for those listening right now is to be open to receiving. Hmm. Be open to receive. Um, we are persons that when it comes to giving, we can give. Right, we can give like somebody, no one's tomorrow. We can give, but I find that especially from those that would have experienced a form of hurt, I want to get to a place where you open your heart and you open your mind to receive love. You open your heart and your mind to receive good things. That good things can happen to you. Good things can happen for you. Good things can happen through you as well. So let's learn the art of receiving. When you learn the art of receiving. Then everything that flows to you, you'll be able to grasp it. Everything that flows to you, you'll be very alert and aware of what's happening around you. But just be, just open your heart to receive. That's the, that's the very, one of the main things I can tell you. And that is something that persons have to learn. It's not something that's easy to do. 
Uh, because of, especially if you have, you know, you've been through what you've been through and you're, you're accustomed, you know, kind of like surviving and just holding down the, you know, holding down the poor and getting things done. But even as a strong person, like put in inverted commas, even as a strong individual, you need to know how to receive love as well. You need to learn how to let your guard down for a while. Even be vulnerable because in vulnerability, it actually is something that's attractive. It, it, it shows your strength when you're vulnerable. It's quite okay to not be okay. It's quite okay to not have everything in place. It's quite okay to not be perfect. But I want to learn the art of just receiving so that when that thing comes to you, you you're able to identify it and open up your heart, open the door of your heart and let it in. Yes, love that. Thank you so much, Marcy. And thank you so much for being here. You're most welcome, Amanda. It was my pleasure. I enjoyed this conversation. (laughs) Awesome. So just as a reminder to everyone listening, remember, you are stronger than you think and you can have the life you imagine having regardless of your past. Make sure to hit the subscribe or follow button so you don't miss an episode of the show. And I will talk to you all soon.